Hey, it's Jim from Janku, and today I want to talk about resizing and cropping images in GIMP 210. Now this is a common feature that people want to use in GIMP because they want to scale their image to work with their website, and it's really easy to do. So let's just take a look at an example over here. I'm going to open up Firefox. I'm just going to grab an image from unsplash.com. So I'm going to download this, and I'll save the file. And then I'll come over here to my downloads. And I'll just grab this picture and I'll drag and drop this over into GIMP and say convert. Okay, so we have this image here. Now you'll notice down here in the bottom that we're only at a 9.09 .09 scale. So if we actually look at 100% scale of the image, it's rather large. So it looks like this. Now, if you were to upload this to a web page, you probably only want an image that is much smaller than this. So loading this whole image and then scaling it down will actually cause your web browser to use more resources and it'll take longer to download. So you really want to scale this down and upload a smaller version of the image. You can do that with your image properties up here. So in your main menu, go to image, scale image, and then you can scale the height and width of this. Now this is linked automatically here. So as I change the width, the height automatically changes as well or if I change the height, the width changes. So you wanna do this so you keep the same aspect ratio because if you were to move these independently by unchecking this link, then you might get an image that is squished. So if you had the width change at a greater rate than the height, you might squish it in one way or another. So keep this linked and then say you need your image to be something like 500 pixels. You can type in 500, press tab, that'll automatically change the height and then you can press scale. So this looks much smaller and we're still at 100% scale here. So this is how large the image would appear when it shows on your web page. Another thing you might want to do is you might want to actually come and just crop out the part of the image that you want to use. So if you wanted the focal point to be this child, you could crop this out specifically. If you come up to your crop tool, you can select that and you can select the area that you want to crop out here. So maybe it looks like this. You also can go to certain dimensions. So if you're looking for a certain size, you can say, Maybe we want the width to be 350 pixels and the height to be 350 pixels as well. So you want a perfect square. It would look like something like this. And then you can move that square around to be the exact point that you want it to be. Something like that might look okay. And then make sure up here that you have the current layer only unchecked. So if you want to crop the whole image and get rid of the background border here, make sure that that's unchecked. And then you can either press enter or just click on the image and it'll crop it down to that size. Now, if we have multiple layers, you can do a couple of different things. So let's just create another layer here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a selection box around this coffee here, and then I'm gonna do a Control C to copy it and a Control V to paste it, and it'll paste to a floating selection here. And I'll right click on this and I'll say to make this a new layer. Now we have a new layer right here that we can move around so I can grab this and I can move it. And the old layer sits here underneath as well, so that's fine. But what I can do now is I can scale this specific layer here. So I could come up to my scale tool I can grab this and I could scale this to be much bigger. Now, one thing you're gonna notice, I'll press enter here, is that this is a little pixelated. So if you were to scale an image up bigger than its original dimension, it will pixelate the image. So what you really wanna do is you wanna start with a higher resolution image to begin with. The exception to that would be is if you're scaling something like a solid color. So for instance, if I were to grab a selection, maybe I want a size like this. And so I'm going to make sure I have my background image selected here just so I can copy this. Since this layer only has this size, this selection wouldn't actually be selecting anything. So I'm going to select this and I'll do a copy with a control C and a control V to paste it. And then I'll just say to a new layer. And now we have this rectangle layer here. So I can move this around. It looks like this. And I can move this on top of the other layer by dragging this up. And now this would appear on top of all the other layers. And what I can do here is I'll just paste over this with a color. So let's make this yellow and I'll hold down shift. And what that will do is it'll paste it over the whole image. So let me just control Z to show you what happened. If I didn't hold down shift, it would just paste over the color that I'm selected right there. So for instance, if paste it over that, or if I were to paste in a different area, it would just paste that specific area. And let me zoom in so you can kind of see what's going on here. So control Z, I'm gonna hold down shift. I'm gonna paste over this whole block. And now we just have a solid color block here. So what I can do with this is I can scale this to different sizes and it won't pixelate since it's just one solid color. So I can grab this. So I will uncheck this so the width is not locked to the height. So I'm going to unlink. And now I can just pull the width out. I can make it longer or I can make it skinnier. And you can change things like that and just press enter to scale it. 
and there's no loss of quality since there's nothing really to distort in this picture. So I use it quite often when I do website mockups. For now, I'm just gonna hide this layer. I'm gonna go back to this pasted layer that we did here, and I just wanna demonstrate cropping out a specific part of a specific layer. So previously when we cropped it out, we got rid of all the background. I could grab my crop tool again, and if I were to just select this coffee mug, something like this, and I can get it nice and narrow and close to the actual coffee cup here. And if I were to just press enter, it's gonna crop the whole image. So it looks something like that. That's not what we want, so I'm gonna control Z that. And let me just draw that one more time. I'm gonna draw the crop border. And this time I'm only going to do the current layer. So this first option here, current layer only, select that and then click. And now we have just that coffee cup there. Now I could come with the erase tool or something like that and I could get rid of the, the border here. So maybe I'll grab something like this rectangle and I could come in here and just erase everything like this. I'm just doing a sloppy job here to demonstrate, but you could do this in a couple different ways. So now we have that and we could place this over the other coffee cup and just make it look larger. That looks pretty bad because we pixelated it and we weren't really careful cropping this out, but that's the kind of feature that you could do with cropping just a single layer out. Additionally, I could merge these layers in together. So I could do something like right click, merge down, and I'll merge these two layers together so I can then scale them at the same time. So let me merge down. So now this is one specific layer, and then I can grab my scale tool and I could scale this layer all together like this. So right now it's not locked to anything. I could hold shift and that will lock it. So without having to click that little link, this will lock the height and width to the same ratio. But if I don't do that, then I could distort the image like this. Now keep in mind when I'm using this tool, it will leave the background here. So you'd have to take care of that independently. I'm gonna control Z to go back. Contrast that with using our image selection up here where we can scale the image entirely together. So if we needed this to be a little smaller, we can bring this down to 140 pixels for instance and scale that and it'll scale the whole image there. Another thing that sometimes happens, let me just get the larger size again here, is you sometimes need something like a logo and you need it to be centered within a picture. So let's just pretend like we're only interested in this little bear logo on the child's shirt. So I'm gonna grab this and I'm going to unselect the current layer only option and I'm just going to get that bear. And now sometimes you need a little extra padding around something like this. So you can actually change the canvas size so you can change the background around this to make it in any sort of representation you want. So sometimes you have a horizontally oriented picture that's wider than it is tall, but you need it to be in a square representation in order to fit in like a profile section on a website or whatever requirement you may have. So I can go to my image, canvas size, and then I can expand the width or the height. So if I just do the width, you can see that the image positions over here on the left. I can drag this so it sits center. And then maybe I'll do something with the height as well, maybe just a little bit. And then I can drag this around to the center there and I can press resize. And then I'll put a background around this like that. And then I can come in here and maybe I just wanna grab one of these colors, grab something like that. And then I'll grab my paste tool and I'm gonna create a new layer here. I'll right click and say new layer and I'll have my layer be transparent, say okay. So now this layer, if I drag this below the current layer, it has this background independent of this picture, so then I can paste a color to this layer, something like that, and I can still move my bare layer around independently on this. And you can do a couple of different things here. I could merge these down again, and I could blur these if I wanted to, so I could smudge this around, so maybe grab like a circular, object, maybe move the size down a little bit, maybe move the hardness down a little bit, and I could kind of blur this stuff together if I want to do something like that. Now, that doesn't look great, but you get the idea. And then when you're all set with your image, you could just come up here and you could export it as a PNG, so export as, and you could call this whatever .jpeg, you could also do a .png, so the difference between a JPEG and a PNG is a JPEG is a smaller file size, so this would be ideal for something like a website, but it doesn't allow you to do things like having transparent backgrounds. So for instance, if we wanted our bear to have a transparent background, we could do that by erasing some of the background here. So let me grab my eraser tool and let me just do something like this and you could erase the rest of this. And if you wanted this section to appear transparent on the sides here, if you were to export this as a JPEG, then it's not going to have those sides. So let me just export that real quick and we'll overwrite this file that's in our downloads folder. So I'll replace that. 
export it. If we take a look at that file, you can see that it has a solid color here. So it's just making a color in that area where we had transparency. But if you wanted something from a background to shine through, like if you were editing a website, you could export this as a PNG, which is a larger file format. Export as, just change the extension to .png like that and export that. Come back over here. And now you can see the background is transparent. So this, these little checker boxes represent a transparent background. So if you had, say, a yellow background on your website, the yellow background would shine through in all these places where the checker box is. So that's the basics of scaling and cropping images in GIMP. Hopefully this was helpful for you. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows to share this with other folks. And until next time, we'll see you later. Take care.